Hello everyone, this is Lolly E. Welcome back. Today I want to talk about these prong fasteners. It's a two pieces, two parts. This comes up through the back of your paper, through two holes that you have placed. You put all, you punch holes in your papers, put the prongs through there, and then thread these down, this down over the top, and then fold the prongs over and slide the bars over the prongs. Now, I had seen these years and years ago, and I was actually at a thrift store uh, a while ago and found just the bars, a whole box of them for 10 cents. And I thought, well, I could make my own holes and then I could just put brads. I don't know what I was thinking. But then I realized, well, you can just buy just the prong fasteners. What you need to realize, though, is that there are just dis different distances between the holes. So you need to get these to match those or you can buy them as a complete set. That's the link I'll give you down below. So these are not new, but I'm going to give you a few tips that I learned along the way. Hopefully it will help make your journey a little more smooth, okay? So these have a two inch capacity, meaning we could make a really thick stack of uh, journals or paper pads. You can see I have a pretty thin stack here. But I was making so many that I just wanted to give you an idea of what you could do. So the first thing that I did was start uh, measuring them four inches wide by six inches long because I just thought that would be a size that I wanted. And so you can see what I did here. Decorated it. Love it. And whether you make the back uh, stiffer than one layer of cardstock is up to you. But what I decided was by making these five and a half inches long instead of six, I could get more uh, pages cut out of my printer paper. I could get four out of each sheet of printer paper as opposed to three. So this is four by five and a half. Very, if you did it four and a quarter, you wouldn't waste any paper at all. And then I discovered that this particular setup which is two and three quarter dis inch distance between holes is exactly what these office hole punches are. And so the smallest mine goes is four inches wide. And that's one of the reasons why I was using four inch capacity. You could do, you could set it up on four and a quarter in here. Okay, so that was the first thing I discovered was go to five and a half long and then you're not wasting paper. Okay, so that's one option there is to make these just a pad, a paper pad like this with all the pages the same size. And of course, I would decorate this one a little more. Let's put these right here. And then I decided what I wanted to do was this where the cardstock um, layers were, oh, tiered like this. And I still have papers in between, not many, but this is just to show you how to do it. So here's some examples here. There are papers in here. I really love this one here with the paper clip. Um, and so this is actually upholstery fabric sample set here. These, a lot of these are page, papers from Topology. So are these. And here's another one. And then another option is to use your mismatched papers. So these are all different widths and lengths, not just widths, but just a heads up on this. You really can't go smaller than three inches wide or you won't be able to punch your hole. The guide only goes to four inches, but you could put a piece of tape here with a little mark on it and you can get a three inch paper here or you can eyeball it. And so just to say, if you try to like do a two and a half, two and three quarter inch paper, you're not going to get holes punched in it. So there's an idea. The beauty of this is that you can use up your scraps. Here's another example, different widths, different lengths. I've got different scrap papers in here, junk journal papers, vellum. So this could be like a little junk journal notebook, but you would have to put some extra papers in here, just so you know. If you use all acid-free papers, you could also turn this into a little photo book. And I have another one here. This is a really cute one. I put buttons on the front. And here's another thing you could do in the end is put two pieces of cardstock in the back, make it stronger, but also only glue them on the sides. And then you've got this pocket 
The only thing that I would recommend you be careful of when you are embellishing is that your embellishments don't interfere with lifting your first page there. So for instance, this bow, when I first put it on there, I put it up too high and I couldn't raise this right, see? You've gotta be careful with that. The, uh, here's another option for embellishment is that I use one of those label stickers. It's a sticker, you just peel the back, stick it down and you should put labels in there. So I filled it full of shaker bits and I sewed it shut and you could see that there, but you could use other methods of sealing that like double-sided tape and then cover it with washi, whatever you want. This is a paper uh, bow. Okay, another point I want to show you is when you are doing a little band, you don't have to put a band across the top. Like this one doesn't have, this has a decorative cardstock band. I like the look of it. This one doesn't have one. Uh, this has fabric. This has a doily. This has fabric. It's actually fabric. Uh, so it's up to you whether you put a band there, but if you do a band, don't make it so wide that it makes it difficult to open your papers. This is the best bet, a nice narrow one like this. And so punch your holes and then trim it down. Once you trim it down and get it narrow, it's hard to get it in here because it's it's way over here and you're not able to use this guide right there. So punch holes, then trim it short. This is a little too long, okay, to allow that. And another option, which I actually do like, um, but it makes it permanent. See, all of these, I can open these prongs at any time, remove the top cover and add pages to it. But with this one, I made this band long, punched the holes, put it down, and then I wrapped the ends around and glued them down. So this is permanent because although I can lift the prongs, I cannot lift this band right there. So I can't add pages, but I like the look. So, and you don't see the bar in the back. Totally up to you, but this is more permanent. So those are just some ideas for what you do for your band. So now I want to show you a good way, a good use of your paper. If you're doing this, you want to start with a 12 inch piece of cardstock. So let's use this, which is graphic 45 typography. And we're going to trim that little, you know, border strip off there. So take your 12 inch paper, cut it at eight and at four. So you have three, four inch strips like this. Then take one of them and cut it at six. Next one, six and a quarter. Next one, six and a half. So what you're gonna do, you'll notice that they're all different heights. So we're going to take oh, one of the shortest one here, which is like five and a half, and then the next shortest one, and then the one that's six inch. So five and a half, five, three quarters, six. Now we need six and a quarter and six and a half. So that's what gives you this. Now, when you're using, uh, and this is extra, which you can use for your next stack. When you're using double-sided paper, you can always flip one over, every other one like that, so that you have a different, uh, different image there. I think it looks a lot better this way. The other thing you can do is to use another sheet and you can intersperse like color, like that. You can see how that would really perk things up here. So I could cut a, a four inch strip here. I could do the same thing. I could cut it at eight and at four and I could do cut one at six, one at six and a quarter, one at six and a half and I could have two of these pads so that way it would uh, break it all up and you would have every other one would be this burgundy color. All you have to do from there is to put them in here. And because this cuts through a lot of paper, I can put all of these through at once. And there you have it. Okay, so we've got that. If you want to have a border across the top, so I have a four inch strip and I'm going to put it through and punch my holes and then I'm going to trim that down. And as I mentioned before, you have to do that first. I'm gonna turn this around to see how much I want right there. Not even measuring, just eyeballing. And there you have it. I think that looks a lot better. So you could see that if I had cut the strip narrow first, I, I wouldn't be able to push it up against this little bar there. 
so that would go there. Any embellishment that you want on the top, you could do it now or later. But if you want to add cardstock into your stash before doing that, this is four by five and a half, four by five and three quarters, four by six, four by six and a quarter. And I don't do any this side because this is the bottom. I'm not gonna put any paper under there. So this is your stash. Let's pretend that we've already added our paper there. Let's get a prong and let's get one of the bars. So you could see how many papers I could put on. That's quite a bit. Oh, I just came undone. Okay, put the prongs in. Make sure your back is nice and flat. Hold this so that the recessed part or concave part is on top and you see both these sliders on top. Then I push it down all the way and push one bar down, slide the little arms sleeves over, push the other arm down and slide the sleeves over the middle. And there you have it. So let's bring these back in. Please consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you for watching. I do a lot of craft tutorials and product reviews. And I think you're going to enjoy what you see here. So there's a lot of options here. And these are just the ones that I've decorated, plus this one. Thank you for watching, everyone. It's a blast playing with these.